Welcome to the start of your web development journey. If you aspire to build great looking websites like these, by yourself or either with a team, you are in the right place. Today we will be learning the basics of HTML so that you can start out your web dev career. Make sure to master these things with great care, because remember, great buildings can only stand on firm foundations. So with that, let's get started. So before we begin, we have to do some preparations. First of all, I want to state that this is a purely and strictly HTML video for absolute beginners. There will be no styling in this video, no CSS, and due to that, I'm saying this for the beginners, don't be surprised, it will look like a damn skeleton. It will be bare bones, it will be ugly, but it's necessary for the process. The other preparations that we need to do is actually get a text editor. It can either be Visual Studio Code, Sublime Text, Notepad++, I don't know, there are a ton of text editors out there. What I do recommend is getting Visual Studio Code because it is the industry standard as of now. And by learning to use Visual Studio Code, even though if it's a bit overkill for this type of project, you will be far ahead because you save time. And you also need to get a web browser Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Microsoft Edge are fine, but I do recommend using Google Chrome as it is yet again the industry standard. Most of the developers use the Google Chrome's web tools because, or the, I mean developer tools, because that's, that's the most complex and that has the best features out of all. So for downloading Visual Studio Code, you can come to code.visualstudio.com slash download. And here you can choose either for Windows, for Mac, or for Linux. We also have a video on how to install and set up Visual Studio Code along with extensions. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. But I believe you can easily go through the installation steps and solve this yourself. Now let's get to the question. What is HTML? Well, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. What this basically means is that HTML defines the structure or the layout of the web page. Without HTML, there is no web page, there is no website. So it's an absolute must, no matter whether you're developing in a huge framework, which is for more advanced developers, or just simply using an HTML file. And I also want to state that HTML is not a programming language, okay? It's a markup language. For the browser to know what type of elements it needs to render because that's what html tells the structure the elements so now that we know what is html let's create our first html file so the first html file that we are actually going to create is going to be named index.html and you're going to create a lot of index.html during your web dev journey why this why not any other name so first of all the HTML files have to end with .html, that's a must. And the index.html is actually the root file of the web page. So when you go to google.com, it's actually an index.html. Or if you go to visualstudio.com, then it's actually, again, an index.html. But here is the example. So index.html is equal to the google.com, but for example, about.html is going to be equal to the google.com slash about. So if you go to the Visual Studio Code website where we've been a minute ago, then it was with the slash download. So it's actually going to be download.html. I hope that's clear. Now let's jump right on to creating this file. So the way we're going to create this file is by coming here to our explorer, file explorer. And then I'm in a folder called HTML crash. So I recommend you create a separate folder for this one. Then you come here, new file, and we are going to say a new text document. So we are going to name it index, as we discussed before. And instead of text, we are going to give it the HTML extension name. If I press enter, it's going to remind us that we are changing the extension name. And that's how it's going to actually be an HTML file. You can see the icon changed. The icon will be the default browser you're using. That's what it's going to open it with. For me, it's Google Chrome. 
and if you don't see or you cannot change the HTML, please be aware that if you create a create a text file without this setting being turned on, then it's going to actually name it index.html.text. So what you need to do is come here to view and the file name extensions need to be checked in. Because otherwise you see it's only saying index. If I check it in, index.html. And now that we're done with this, we can open up our file and you see that there is the path that's in your documents. When index.html is completely local, it won't be available on the net. So you will have to deploy it later if you want that, but we'll be having videos of that also. It's basically exists only on your computer. And you can see it's a totally blank document. So what I'm going to do is actually just open up Visual Studio Code. And this is what you're supposed to see. So I come here up to File. And then open folder. We're opening the whole folder. This, it is good practice to open a folder because then you'll be able to access all the files. Later we'll have a CSS file and a JS file there. So just come here, open folder, and you are going to browse for your HTML crash folder. And as you can see on the left side, there is our index.html. If I click it, it's completely empty, as it should be. So to get this started, we are going to call Visual Studio Code's help for the basic HTML structure. This is going to be a shortcut. Don't get overwhelmed. We'll go over each line. There are two ways to do it. Alright, so you zoomed in so that you can see better. So the way you call the basic HTML structure is by either with an exclamation mark, like this, or by saying HTML, oops, HTML5. Now, this is a lot, but we'll go through this line by line. So, the first thing that this is going to say is that it signals to the browser the file that it's currently processing is an HTML file. And this also will tell the browser that this is an HTML5 format HTML file. You don't have to worry about this. I'm just mentioning that there are other times, types like XML. But since HTML5 is the industry standard and you'll see only this most of the times, we are going to work with this. So, as a conclusion, it tells the browser that it's going to work with an HTML file. Then, the HTML tag, this will signal the start of our HTML. And you can see it has a language setting. This will tell the browser that the page is going to be an English site. Then comes the head and body. What you have to know about the head and body is that the head is going to contain extra information about the website that will have the so-called crawlers in the browser. These crawlers are Google scrollers is what going to help your website pop up in the search bar when, uh, when you're searching for a website it's just going to analyze your website but you don't have to worry too much about this in the beginning and then there's the body which is a, which is simply going to render whatever we write in it this is where our html elements will be it also generated us three more lines a meta tag which is an additional information is going to set the character set to utf8 is just the most used character set in most of the text formats then there is this line which all is going to say is that the, it says the viewport scale to one you could even emit this and no worries would be there and then there is the title which is right now document but we are actually going to change this to HTML crash. Now I drag this to the side and we've opened our index.html a minute ago. If you didn't close it, then this is how it should look like. We changed. Well, first of all, I saved the file. You can do the saving by coming to file and save all or by pressing Ctrl plus S. So Ctrl S as for save. I saved it, but the changes are not being applied. No, you may ask, what should change? But if I refresh now, because that's how our HTML files will get processed, 
you can see that I changed the title to HTML crash. And up there, it's also HTML crash now. So this is what the title is for, setting that little text up there. So let's finally start something. Let's say I have want some text to my website. Then I just simply say, this is my, this is the start of my web dev journey. Yet again, I save the file. No changes are being applied, but if I refresh it, you can see it says this is the start of my web dev journey. So whatever you write inside the body will get rendered as text right there. So jumping back to our slides a bit, we are going to talk about HTML tags. What are HTML tags? HTML tags are basically the building blocks that we are going to use to structure our website. And there are two types of tags. I'd say there is the basic tag. The format is going to be relatively simple. You can see the angled brackets. Then inside that the tag. Then another angled brackets, but this one with a forward slash at the start. Then again the tag. There are two examples. For example, a paragraph with the type content or a div with the type content. These are the basic tags, but don't worry, it will all make sense. We'll go over all of these in great detail. Then there are the self-closing tags, which you do not really require a pair because you cannot put anything between them. You can see there is the structure, simply angled brackets, but then the forward slash is going to be at the end of the tag. There is, for example, the break tag, which is going to simply say a line break, or there is the image tag. You could also emit the forward slash from there, if you prefer, because HTML5 also accepts that format. Now I'm going to start structuring our code as well with a few comments. The way you are going to write comments in Visual Studio Code or in HTML is by saying an angle bracket, exclamation mark, and then dash dash and it's going to finish it for you with the end tag and inside this i'm just going to make a title for each tag just like this if i refresh now it won't get rendered because this is a command this is for the developers so that they understand each other's code and we are going to start off by having a look at the typography let's have a look first at the age one tag the age one as age is going to stand for the header so i say header one I refresh and that appeared this is a bold big task big big text header what this is going to do and the reason there is a one there is because there are actually six type of headers right that exist so if I say h2 and header 2 and refresh then you can see it's a bit smaller and it's going to keep getting smaller until we reach h6 I'll show you all six and fill up the values so I filled it up, I even zoomed in a bit more, I hope it's visible. And now you can remember, come here and say save all or control S. I save, then refresh. And you can see those are the tags right there. From age 1 to age 6. Another, the last typography tag that I want to show you is going to be the paragraph tag, which is simply a P. And inside it, we are going to put some dummy text which is just for display so you it won't even make sense and the way you can do it in html or sorry not in html in visual studio code is by saying lorem so if you say lorem press enter if it overflows like this for you press alt and z it's still going to overflow you can see it's some stupid dummy text but if I refresh this now, you can see the paragraph element wraps it around. So whatever you put inside the paragraph element, we have some space from the top and the bottom. And if I copy this paragraph element a few more times, we can show this better. So if I refresh, then you can see these are all paragraph elements. Now I want to talk a little bit about inline text stylers. Inline, which is going to mean that they have to, they won't take up any space. They will simply be in line with the text, so they won't be formatted and structured like this, like a P element. And just to demonstrate this, let's say I'm going to say strong, and strong will stand for bold as well. There are actually I'll show you in a minute 
two variables of this. If I wrap lorem with strong, this is the third paragraph, and I save and then refresh, you can see how lorem gets boldened. If I do the same, but with the b tag, which is also stands for bold, and I refresh, then you can see it also gets bold. To hit two birds with one stone, I want to show you this with the introduction of lists. Now lists, you are most familiar with them if you've used the text editor. You can do by, there are two types, either an unordered list or an ordered list. First the unordered, which is the UL tag, unordered list. Makes sense. Inside the unordered list, to make elements, you can say li, like list element. And inside the li, you can write whatever you want. For example, strong. I copy this a few more times to make a few more elements. Save it and then refresh. You can see there are the strong, bold, and italic, whatever I just listed there in the list element. You can actually do the same if I copy this now, the whole UL element, and then I say ordered list instead of unordered, so OL element. If I save and refresh now, you can see there are the strong, bold, italic with one, two, three before them. Now let me just do a bit of styling. What I'm going to do so that you don't have to watch the bottom of the page is come here and you don't have to do it. This is for the video purposes. Style. And I'm actually going to set a height of 3000 pixels for the body, so the whole body. And this will enable us, if I refresh, to start scrolling basically 3000 pixels down. So you can watch in the middle. The reason I said I'm going to show you inline text styler here is because they are much better to see in a listed format. So, as I said, inline text stylers will wrap something inside them. So we can say strong, and then inside the strong, we wrap this text called strong in the list. I'll actually break this up so that you can see better. If I refresh now, it again becomes bold. I do the same for the bold refresh there it is and there are four more that i want to show you so i cut it here and come back when i've done the formatting so i've done all that was needed as you can see the strong tag will make something bold the b tag will also make something bold you can see it right there the i tag will make something italic while the emphasize tag will also make something italic the delete tag will cross the text out you can see right there. And the inserted tag will make an underline to the element. These are not the most important things in HTML, but they are good to know and they are easy to start with. So I wanted to cover these things. And before we jump into links and images, I just want to mention that there are these div tags. You're going to come across a lot of them if you are reading someone's code. So divs are mainly wrappers, the most often used elements. That's all divs are. I actually zoom out a little bit beca here because it's getting annoying. Divs are basically just containers. They are natural con neutral containers. You will see them styled a lot. They are like little boxes that hold items. That's all they do. I just wanted to mention this. We are going to jump into links and images. Hey there, it's me from the future. I made a huge mistake here. So I put the div outside of the body tag. It will work regardless. I will be putting everything outside of the body tag, but please you guys put it inside the body tag, everything that I write. And just keep in mind that this is how it should be. And this was just a mistake that I put it outside of the body tag. Now, before we get started with the link elements, let's come back to our slides and talk a little about, about HTML attributes. What are the HTML attributes? Basically, they are settings for the elements. They are, there are all types of attributes. For example, the image has an attrib attribute called source, and that will say what type of image you want displayed there. They always start 
at the start tag so if we are talking about as you as we saw the basic type of tag not the self-closing tag then it's always going to be on the first element this is the syntax that it's actually using so the tag attribute equals and then you give it the value there are these are two examples one is actually what we're going to be using the href google.com and then the image which i was talking about which is the three dot png so if we come back now the anchor element is actually an a tag as word anchor and it will give us the age ref attribute by default and inside this we can say https slash slash google.com like this and what this is going to say if i save and refresh oh sorry it, you see it won't actually get displayed only if you write something inside it so for example go to google i refresh now it will show us the google.com page you could say any other link in here but you see it redirected us and our page is gone and that's not really what you want to do for example you have a portfolio you want to redirect but then they you don't want them to leave your portfolio i'm actually going to copy this and go to google on a new page and here what what's going to let us go to a new page when we click it is by saying target and blank so this will open in a new blank page if i save and refresh there you can see go to google on a new page it opened it really in a new page it's all that simple these are the link elements so we can start moving on to our image element and i'm going to put a line break here this is the break so that it's separated from the links i mean the images are separated from the links the image tag is what we are going to have a look at press center visual studio is always going to help me out and it's going to throw us two attributes the source attribute and the alt attribute if you hover over these there is a bunch of information that you can see right there but i'll explain so the source attribute is the image that is going to be displayed the alt attribute is what's going to be displayed as text if the image cannot be found or cannot be loaded and there is a third attribute that i want to show you which is the title the title will get shown if you hover over the image so if i come to google and type sample images i want this bird for example i come here and not copy the image copy the image address paste it in it's a long address then refresh and you can see it's a huge picture huge bird and actually for styling purposes for it not to be this huge there are two more attributes that you can use which is the width attribute you can also set this in css which is far better practice but since we are only using html i'm going to be doing this 300 for example width 300 will say it's going to be 300 pixels wide and height 300 will also say the same so it's going to be calculated in pixels if i save and refresh it's way smaller now as for the alt tag let's also set something so bird and the title let's say bird title if i refresh now if i hover over it it says bird title right there if i copy this whole element paste it right in but this time i do some stupid things for example it cannot find the image because i messed up the whole source code or the source uh, attribute then you can see the bird alt is what's getting shown right there i want to show you two more ways to make some images and for that we are going to download an image so i come to images i really like this cola so i'm going to say save image as and I'm actually going to save it inside the folder, the HTML crash folder. It saved it. If you come back to 
the Explorer tab in the top left corner in Visual Studio Code, you can see the color appeared right here. There it is. And if I come back, I want to copy this image yet again. We won't be changing, or actually we won't be having the alt and the title because they can be emitted. And as for the source, if you press in Visual Studio Code Control plus plus space, then it will say what type of image you want because it is downloaded and it is in our folder. It will suggest that you can use the cola.jpg. And then you don't need the link. You can actually have it downloaded in your folder. If I save now and refresh, you can see there's the cola. I will change it to a different width and height. There we go. And I will put a break tag here so that it's under the bird. I refresh, it gets under the bird. And another thing that I want to show you is that if we come to our file explorer and we say copy, copy the image, then create a new folder. This is by right click, create a new folder. The folder is going to call, be called images. You can call it whatever you like. And then I paste it here, the cola. Then you can keep a structured folder in here and say image. The source is going to be images slash cola dot jpg. I'm going to copy over the width and height values. Refresh. And you can see it gets displayed the same way. It's just the path that changed. Let's move on to buttons. There are actually some embedded buttons in HTML. So if I say button and write simple button it's going to look ugly but if i refresh now there's going to be a button right there which you can click and later we can assign click events and handle the functionality when it is clicked but for now this is just an html element that you can know of and if you if i paste it here and there is an attribute for this one as well called disabled the disabled you can set either to true or false. If I say disabled true and change the text over here, refresh, then you can see it cannot be clicked. This will be important, for example, when submitting forms so that the user won't keep clicking the button when it's already under the process because then they will send more requests and all that. So it's just a styling option that you can know of and it's often Coming, coming in handy. Then the next element that is also often used is the table. The table has a certain structure which you have to keep. There are rules to this. So there's the table which is going to hold the whole table together. It's, it's basically a wrapper. Then inside the table you have on the same level two elements. One is going to be the T head and one is also going to be the T body. So the T head is going to be the header I will show you in a minute and the body is all the other data that you put inside it. There is yet another level because inside the T head to actually put some data you need T age tag. So as for table header and let's say header one. And I'm going to copy this over three more times. Two and three. And I refresh. You can see there is our header. Header one, header two, header three. Inside the body, the, you use the TD tag, which stands for table data, which is going to be, for example, data one. And I'm going to copy this over. This over like this and actually I just cut this because I forgot inside both of these you need a table row <laughs> so, so this is a multi-layered HTML tag table row and inside the row you put the table data and here on the head as well a table row and inside the table row there is the data you can have multiple rows if I refresh you will see so you have multiple rows as well as you can have multiple data with multiple rows there you can have it and let's say that there is the 
data in the first one, but I want that data to take up two more spaces. So data core span is what I'm going to call it, because as for the table data, there is an attribute called core span, and you can set it to two, so it will take up two spaces instead of one. There you can see this all is taken up, and there is the gap because I didn't fill it with text. You can, I believe, do the same with the table header. Yes, there is the core span attribute. If I delete the table header too, or maybe just leave it here. Let's write like this. You can see it takes up all two of the header spaces. There is the third place where header two is, and there's the header three, which is basically overflowing because it's at the fourth column place. So I hope this is somewhat understandable. There's the table. It has two sections, a head and a body, just like our HTML. Inside the head and the body, you need rows and the table header and the table data will serve as columns. All there is to it, you can style it in CSS later and make it look pretty because this is just text right here. Now let's move on to forms. One of the most important elements in HTML, it will gain more relevance once we start using JavaScript to make it functional because that's how people usually subscribe to email list or give data or send email messages, all that stuff. So this is done by the form tag, which is again a wrapper just like the table. It gives us an action attribute by default where a PHP file can be added, but we don't need a PHP file right now. So you can just safely ignore this and delete it. Then inside the form, you can put, for example, input elements. This input element particularly is going to be of type text. And let's give it a name because it's good practice to give a name as an identifier to each input element, which is going to be full name, for example. If I refresh, you can see there is an input field right there. And if since it's type of text, I can enter whatever I want in it. Let's also give it a label. A label, the four is going to be for the full name. And enter your full name. If I refresh now, there is the enter your full name. I want these to be aligned nicely. So I'm going to put a line break before the form. And I'm going to put a line break between these. If I refresh, then there is a space in between the form and they are under each other. So with these input elements, you can actually collect a lot of data. And there are a bunch of other types. We are going to have a look at the most commonly used ones. So for example, a label or the age input element, which is not yet created. A line break. And then yet again, an input. But this time, you can see there are a bunch of input types. It's going to be of type number. If you're wondering how I did that, just control and space and it's going to bring up the list that can go in there it's going to be of type number and if i save now and refresh uh, uh, uh there is a line break that's missing somewhere right here line break there you can see there are these arrows which can let you go in minus or plus or you can also type in it but you cannot type text in it except for for example an E because it actually has a value in mathematics and there are some settings for the input elements as well for example you can set a min a min value so 18 will be the minimum value for the age and the maximum value will be 70 so if i want to type in 9 oh i have to refresh but if i try to go lower or press these buttons it won't let me and i can go up all the way you can actually for example type in nine but when you try to submit the form it will warn you that the minimum value is 18 so it won't let you and you speaking of values there is an attribute called value and if you set that value you can set it to 20 for example this will be the default value whenever you visit the page you can set min length and max length for the full name as well for example three characters but again you can type in it and 
even type one character in it it will only show whenever you submit the form let's look at another input and i'm going to copy this the label for this is going to be date and it's going to be of type date the input element i mean we will get rid of these values because there is no that type, there is no value of that type in the date element and if i refresh you can see i can choose there's a whole calendar appearing and i can choose a date you can put we usually do put a button in this form with the type submit and whenever you click this button it will actually get submitted so let's try this I submitted and do you see how we set a min length to three characters and it's warning us that there is only one character right there or if I say nine here but I actually say something like this then the value must be greater than or equal to 18 so it's warning us it won't let me submit and the last input element that I want to show you is a select tag this time I'm sick of names and IDs and all that so we won't be giving it and Inside the select tag, you can put options there. The value will be important when we get to JavaScript, not until then. But you can select, let's say colors, because those are easy. This will let you select from all of these colors. So blue, green, red. You can see right there, there is a drop down, and this is the basic. The base drop down in html and we are reaching the end of this so i want to talk about structural elements which are going to be header section and footer so if i say header section here section there and the footer these will do nothing absolutely nothing they will simply be like a p tag or a div or another div this is for the developers and the browser to know that well there is a header usually a navigation menu comes right there but there is the footer usually a copyright and some other information like contact information comes there and th those are sections so that you can separate your content these are some newer elements you can replace these with simple divs or you can simply use these it will help keep your html a bit more clear but other than that there is no real use to these i just wanted to show you and we finally get to combining stuff so for example if i go back for our link elements our anchor elements i copy this remove the go to google on a new page and put an image in there with the let's use the cola and um, let's actually give it a width of 150 pixels and a height of 150 pixels. A pixel is not needed there. Then you can hover over it, click the image, and it will throw you to Google. So whatever you have that you can combine, wrap in each other, as you can see, an A can be or, or an image can be wrapped in a elements you can do all the same we've basically done this in our list elements with the inline tags that right here so the insert the delete inside the list element you can do all that so what i encourage you to do as for the end of this is to whatever you have in mind try combining stuff and try coming up with something new so this is so that you can practice using these elements because HTML is really the, the start of all the things in the web development. So without HTML, there is no website, as I said. And to give you an idea of what you can try playing around with is actually copying this HTML file, pasting it right here, renaming it, for example, to about.html. Then there is the about but this time i'm going to cut all of this out and i just noticed that we were working this 
all time outside of our body tag, which is not one thing that you want to do. This was a mistake, but it worked regardless. You can see, you can try out all these things. So I just put this back inside the body. Pay attention to this. The example I wanted to show you is coming on to a A element. And if you press Ctrl plus space in here, you can see we can go to the about.html. And inside the about.html, I'm going to say set another one. We go back and we can jump across our HTMLs with these anchor elements. So if I refresh, here is the go to tag that I given. We can go to our about.html, you can see it changed in the browser, then we can go back. It's all that simple. So I really encourage you to play around with these and maybe look up some more elements and hone your HTML skills to mastery. So with that, this video is over. I highly encourage you to go to the CSS crash course. If it's not out yet, we'll be having it out in about a week. And if you found value in this video and would like to see more, then please consider giving us a like, maybe even subscribe. But other than that, I hope to see you in the next one.